nature gives everything to us. It's all about respecting the nature, learning from nature. There's not so much to it, you know, it's just observing and taking what nature gives you, upgrading it the way you can and respecting the nature and you'll have everything. I'm Jeff. I just retired from the military, sold everything I own, and now I'm traveling around the world to learn from brewers, winemakers, distillers, and tell their story. This is my journey of beer, wine, and spirits. Hi, my name is Neven Workapic. Welcome to Lika. Cheers. So Neven, absolutely love your story. Love being here, learning the culture of Croatian distilling and, and fruit brandy. But it's interesting for me, how did you get into distilling? It's a tradition with us. And when I was a kid, I was helping my father and my uncle distilling every, every autumn since I was eight or nine years old, something like that, you know. So I'm around the still for more than 30 years. I never thought about it like doing it for a living until four or five years ago. All this experience since childhood helped me a lot, you know, and a couple of years ago I realized like, you know, I, I like this, you know, I enjoy this. I could do this for a living, you know, I, you know, I, I want to open a distillery. Your fruit brandies, Rakia, you actually planted the trees. Yeah. You actually harvested the fruits. You, you're checking the fruits to make sure they're ripe. I'm not gonna say it's the only way to do it, but because you know you can buy very high quality fruit and distill. But it's again part of our tradition, you know. We have orchards and I like nature. I plant trees, uh, fruit trees. I even find wild ones. I plant them where I want them, then I graft them in spring with a variety that I like. It's the way you learn about the fruit because making a fruit brandy is not as easy as people think. It's, it's even more demanding than making whiskey. This is culture, man. I mean, this is yeah. how it's done. By the way, it has been done and it's still being done today. I mean, you go next door and they have yeah, the yeah. same contraption. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Talk to me next, about that. Ne yeah. Next week, neighbors are gonna be doing it. Be the ones, yeah. 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 And they're still, and uh, it's it's how it's being done for hundreds of years. Yeah, for ages. Yeah. So it's it's tradition. It's something that it's just uh, it's part of our lives. We walked around the area, fruit trees everywhere. Yeah. I mean, yeah. you harvest the fruit. Okay, you eat a little bit, but I know a better yeah, it, way to use your the fruit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then you fight your mom and your and your and your wife and your aunt. Who's gonna take more plums for uh, brandy or for jam? <laughs> So talk to me now. So we got the lid on. Now we need to put some more water okay. in here. Water stops the vapors from inside the still, going out on the side, but to go through the pipe to be distilled, to get the spirit. Natural seal. Yeah. Essentially. Yeah, exactly. Over here we have a barrel full mm -hmm. of plum mash. Mesh from local plums. Mm -hmm. It's an old heirloom variety and it's the best plum there is for plum brandy. I mean, are you are you saying that because your your trees are right behind you and that's, that's yeah, that's one of the reasons. But, but it's all, but also because it's true. It's true. Yeah. Because it's, when you open it after the fermentation is done, yep. what you see on the top, you see this layer looks like a cake. Yeah. Yeah. But it doesn't taste like a cake. It doesn't smell like a cake. Wow. Is that how, the, how acid acidity? is? Like? Yeah, it's acidic. Yeah, it's acidic. It's so it's practically it's acid. It's, it's full of yeah. bacteria, and you don't want that in your fruit brandy. So, yeah. so what we do, uh, we take that top thing off. Okay. Mix them to get this disintegrated. Then I added pectolytic enzymes mm -hmm. to break down the pectin bon uh, bonds. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, after that, I added yeast of my choice. It's one type of wine yeast and some yeast food. In my opinion, we should we should get pretty good brandy out of this. But if you want to do it traditionally, how people usually do it, they leave stones, they leave everything there is. The wild yeasts that are on the uh, outside yeah. of the fruit, fruit. Yep. they start to work. How do you know when fermentation is complete? You see that, I know you saw that crust on the top. You can try it. Sure, yeah. You can, you can even try this juice. Mm -hmm. 2% alcohol. So it's, it's a bit sour, so there's yeah. no sugar. It's like a sour beer, isn't it? It really is. Yeah? It literally is. Yeah, that is really tart. Ooh. Yeah, so 
That's the sign the fermentation is done. Yeah. It's ready to distill. You can use refractometer also. So you can squeeze some of the juice on the refractometer and you can see how much sugar there is. That's a scientific way to do it, you know. Fruit mash needs to ferment for a couple of weeks. It all depends on the temperature. The best temperature is uh, between 18 and 20 degrees Celsius. You get the best aromas. If the temperature is higher, you know, where it's fermenting, the fermentation is, is faster. So sometimes, when it's really hot outside, sometimes the fermentation can be done in seven or ten days. And when the fermentation is done, then you distill it. And so you make the first round, you, make, you do the second round. In the first round, you collect low lines. In the second round, you make the cuts. So we collected all the low lines. We, we dumped it into the, the still here. Yeah. Talk to us about what's happening next. Yeah, now we're getting the good stuff. Right. At this moment, we're expecting to start dripping. Okay. Those drops, first part of the spirit, mm -hmm. is something that you don't want to drink. And you don't want to don't give it to your enemy. You want to you wanna, you wanna clean some stuff with it, but yeah. you know, yeah. it's nail polish practically. Yeah. So we're collecting some of that now. Then we're going to start going to the methanol part. It shouldn't be so much now because this plum mesh, as you saw the other day, mm -hmm. it was no stones, no stems, no leaves, nothing, just, just pure fruit. Right. So it shouldn't be too much ethanol. What we're doing now, I'm going to collect in a couple of glasses several different fractions and uh, then I'm going to decide what I want to keep, what I, what I will throw, you know. So, you know, and so from now, we're going to slightly move from heads to hearts and the hearts is, you know, it's what we're going to collect. And how do you know when you go from heads to hearts? I mean, especially with like the plum, the plum rock here. By the, by the nose. By the nose. By the nose, yeah. yeah. The only way to do it. Yeah. And years and years of experience, huh? It's more of a, let's put it, an artistic freedom of a distiller. Mm -hmm. uh, when to make the cut. When you're making fruit brandies, is it's mostly between methanol and ethanol. It's like, so it depends what you like, you know, what your nose likes. So what so you want to do now? Yeah, do that now. Yeah. And we can put this one, for example, we can put it here. Yeah. So this was the first one. First one. Yep. Yeah. We're getting into the good stuff now. <laughs> assistant distiller. Sorry Jeff. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, it's not the lowest point in my life being uh, beaten out by a cat. <laughs> We've been uh, collecting the hearts here for yep. roughly about an hour. Yeah. yeah and okay. talk to me, now you're talking about now we're wanna, the tails. So. Yeah, now I want to make the cut, uh, mm -hmm. cut between uh, the hearts and the tails. Yep. And with fruit spirits, uh, you have to be really careful about it yep. because it can, it can go bad really easy. So, you know, I have tried it a few times already, but I, I think we're going to make the cut now. Uh, it will still have aroma on the nose, it will still have nice smell, but when you taste it, it will be bitter, it will be a bit uh, unpleasant, you know, you'll just see it now. Yeah, yeah, this is the right right spot to make the cut. And these are, how to say, you know, they're leftovers, they're tails and heads, but uh, with the four shots separated, the four shots we use for windshield cleaning and stuff like that. Right. And this we're gonna redistill at the end when we collect from all the runs. We're gonna redistill it as a fruit brandy of lower quality. You can still pull out aromas and it can be still very nice and healthy. I mean healthy, yeah. Uh, it won't kill you. But it won't be as as high quality as this. Yeah. Yeah. Now and this, I mean you yielded roughly a, ten a bit above ten. Ten liters. Ten liters at around sixty-six percent alcohol. <laughs> We're gonna leave it now to rest for a couple of months for all the compounds to marry because uh, you will see how much it will change after a couple of months. I would suggest minimum three months to keep it, you know. 
and then start diluting it with demineralized water the osmosis bit by bit and till when you like it you know like 40 42 43 45 percent depends depends what it suits you the best you know, just try it with it you know and see how it goes one interesting thing is that a lot of people think that clear spirits clear fruit brandies you can drink right away and they're good right away after they're distilled you know you can drink them it's no problem but they need time you know all those compounds to marry through time so it's minimum three or four months you have to leave it to ripen even more not just staying in a like like whiskey or something to age it in a barrel you can some types of fruit brandies but they need time what are some of the lessons that you learned from your father now that you apply to distilling patience patience yeah patience uh, you need to have patience with distilling you need to have patience with uh, the whole process you need to learn from every mistake like in everything in life i know it sounds stupid but it's in everything what you do what does the future hold for nevin and yeah. distilling these amazing fruit brandies we'll see we'll see um yeah i'm planning to start the distillery to open the distillery uh we'll see how much time i'll need you know uh, it depends on many factors but i'm aiming for it and uh, i'm positive i'm gonna make it uh, because it's something I want to do, I enjoy doing. Time flies when I distill. I don't feel like I'm working when I do that. To me, that's the sign number one. It's what I should do. So. Devin, I got to tell you, this was one hell of an experience for me. I learned so much and to be able to come in and learn the tradition of making fruit yeah. granny was absolutely amazing. My tradition to give a bottle from the last place I learned from, and it's from our good friends in Munich, Germany, Duke Gin. I think you'll like it, my friend. Thank you. Thanks, brother. It was great having you here. Cheers. But, and you're gonna get one special thing also, and it's just being produced over there. There's a guy. <laughs> Thanks, brother. Oh.